Top of the morning to you, YouTube, and happy St. Patrick's Day. Let's celebrate it by wearing green and talking about one of the most famous creatures in Irish mythology. He makes shoes, has a pot of gold, and convinces children it's healthy to eat marshmallows for breakfast. Let's learn about the leprechaun. I'm Tristan Johnson, this is Step Back History. Be sure to click the subscribe button as well as the bell notification to never miss a new Step Back video or live stream. Leprechauns are, probably of no surprise to you, Irish. While the first reference to an actual leprechaun can only be found as far back as the 8th century. Aspects of a leprechaun go way further back to a supernatural race of Irish creatures called the Tuatha de Danann. They're thought to represent the deities from pre-Christian Gaelic times. This pantheon has roots all over the Celtic world. The first references to what would become leprechauns comes from legends about water spirits called the Lucropan, which means small body. That portrayal as a water spirit or water sprite coupled with the spellings from a few different regions in Ireland give a substantial suggestion that leprechauns have an origin as some sort of aquatic creature. These spirits eventually merged with these stories of a small household fairy who would haunt people's cellars and drink heavily, which I gotta say, sounds like maybe the best fairy ever. Some also suspect there was influence from the Bruni, from Scottish settlers in Ulster. Now, let's talk about the word leprechaun. By the way, sorry Gaelic speakers in advance. The word leprechaun comes from the Irish word lichrachan, defined by Patrick Deneen as a pygmy or sprite. Other researchers think it might come from the Irish phase Leith Brogan, which means shoemaker. We'll explore a little bit about why later. Other explanations range from the corruption of the Middle Irish Lycropan, being a compound of the words small and body, the word corp being borrowed from Latin. The earliest references to a leprechaun come from a medieval tale called Ho oh, Jesus, the extra Fergus MacLeity. It's the story of a man named Fergus MacLeity, the king of Ulster. He fell asleep on a beach, and when he awoke, found himself being dragged into the sea by two leprechauns. He captured them, and the leprechauns offered Fergus three wishes for their release. It was during the 19th century, most of the world became aware of the leprechaun outside of old Irish folktales. Though it seems leprechaun myths were widespread on the Emerald Isle. Near Lismore in Waterford County, there's the Knock Nalurican, or the Hill of the Leprechauns, or the Pula Lupercadone in Kilgorlin in Kerry County. Once the English started to document Irish mythology, they blended the Leprechaun with a few other Irish mythological creatures. They took aspects from the Cluricaun, that awesome drinking, smoking basement fairy, and the Far Darig, which is an Irish trickster creature. Tricksters are a common type of mythological creature that appear all over the world. More on them in this episode of Crash Course Mythology. Despite how iconic the leprechaun has become, they rarely appear in Irish mythology and are more of a recent folklore creature. This means they showed up in folk tales, but rarely did anybody believe in them. The leprechaun is supposed to be the son of an evil spirit or a degenerate fairy, but is usually considered neither good nor evil. Think more chaotic neutral. They're considered a type of fairy, but not like Tinkerbell fairies. In Irish myth, fairies are horny little, mean-spirited creatures, equally as likely to dazzle as to kill you. The leprechaun is distinct in the fairy myth by its solitary nature. Leprechauns are always alone in their folk tales, living in remote areas and making shoes. Not sure where this part came from, but yeah, the leprechaun is a fairy shoemaker. And apparently good ones at that, because as we all probably know, the leprechaun usually is in possession of a pot of gold. Of course, the end of a rainbow. If you can catch one and threaten to hurt it, it will show you where the gold is, but only if you can keep your eyes on it. The leprechaun will try to make you look away and make its escape. Another distinctive thing about leprechauns and Irish mythological creatures is they become known mostly for the way they sound. Leprechauns were known for the tap, tap, tapping of their tiny cobbler hammers. But another example you might know is the Banshee, an Irish fairy known for its horrible screech. Ultimately though, the Leprechaun represented a morality tale, specifically the folly of getting rich quick. 
taking gold from the leprechaun, spoke of how the gaining of wealth came from interfering with the world. Oh, how egalitarian that would be in a non-fuel society. In the stories, the leprechaun looks like a tiny old man with a cocked hat and a leather apron, like a little gobbler. Today, he's thought to wear green, but in the past, the leprechauns wore red. He smoked a pipe and had a long beard. Descriptions of the leprechaun show that, for the longest time, different regions of Ireland had their own regional looks for the little guys. Today, the leprechaun is a lily slurry of changes from its Gaelic roots as it molded for different literary and commercial purposes. What we think of when we think of the leprechaun is of little actual resemblance to the leprechauns of old folklore. It's been sanitized for modern audiences, and we're now at the point where we have Lucky the leprechaun. You know, the one who peddles sugar to children with marshmallow cereal. Some might remember Lubdon, the murder leprechaun from the movie Leprechaun, played by Warwick Davis. Some images are wholly borrowed from other cultures. A modern leprechaun is depicted as sitting on toadstools with a red beard and a green hat, but this better describes the German household spirit, the kobold, rather than the leprechaun of Irish folklore. Lastly, there's of course the issue that modern day leprechauns are mostly just 19th century racist caricatures of Irish people. This is to the point where some people have taken up issue with the University of Notre Dame's leprechaun sports mascot for the fighting Irish. Leprechauns show up rather often around St. Patrick's Day, and they are iconic of Irish culture, pushing those stereotypes. So that's the leprechaun, a neat little iconic creature of Irish folklore, and a small part of a deep mythology which doesn't get talked about all that much. Happy St. Patrick's Day. It's been a minute since I plugged my Curious Cat page. It's a site where you can give video suggestions or ask questions of me, all anonymous and without registration. Just go to curiouscat.me slash tristanpej to ask me stuff. This video is made possible by these beautiful people, as well as the rest of my patrons over at Patreon. I'd like especially to thank Don and Carrie Johnson, as well as Colbyn Mani for their generosity. The theme song is by 12 Tone, and come back next time for more Step Back. Mm -hmm.